Hi guys, Ruth Elgato here and Ruth Elgato's Glamour page. Um, welcome to my channel if you this is your first time seeing me today. And welcome back to my channel if you're already a part of the Truth Tribe and you are subscribed to my channel. That's my cat, sweetie. He wants to say hey. So guys, I decided to come on camera today because I really needed to touch on a subject that means uh, really a whole lot to me. Okay, so I want to talk about the subject of love today. Love in the black community. I always talk about the black community because voila, I'm black. So um, yeah, I like to talk about the black community and issues that the black community on a consistent basis, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> issues on a consistent basis that the black community struggles with. So um, I've been really in my head a lot lately about my my uh, <laughs> about my relationship that I'm in right now as well as other relationships that in some sense meant something to me and um I've come to recognize from looking at a few different um informative videos that I'm not going to show you guys but I am going to share some of what I've learned from watching those videos um, I was watching a few videos today of males and females talking about love, talking about black love, talking about the games people play and how it affects people. Now, guys, first and foremost, I don't know if you guys can hear the music in the background, but that's not my music. So hopefully I don't have any issues with the copyright stuff. Even though I'm not monetized yet, y'all, I'm doing the best that I can to obtain habits of a person that is monetized so that when I do get monetized, um, I won't have too much of a hard time. Um, now, some of my videos, I will still show videos that other like clips of other videos and stuff like that, especially to get y'all to understand, you know, what I'm talking about if I'm talking about that video or sometimes I will um, dance or move around to some music and that might have copyright issues but other than that I do the best that I can to not, like not incorporate anything that's going to cause copyright issues or problems so that's why I always do the best that I can to address that but anyway going back to the focus of what this video is about so I've come to recognize a lot of things and I have to be honest and say I really don't know how I feel about what I'm recognizing but I do understand that it cannot be ignored anymore so what I'm recognizing and I've already been recognizing this but it's just like little by little by little by little because things come to you in life little by little like in portions you know because life is big life is huge so you can't take life all at once you know what I'm saying so when you're learning, you can't learn all at once. You got to break things down. And so I recognize, you know, that, yes, it's definitely necessary to break things down. And I recognize a lot in my journey of love and being in relationships, not even just being in relationships, but also having friendships. Like, <clears throat> I know that I, I really noticed how in this world, relationships are compromised in every way shape and form okay romantic relationships friendships you name it it's compromised in some way shape or form and like and it's crazy but what i have to share with you guys is that i recognize something um i didn't start dating until i was 19 um if it was up to my mother i probably would have never dated <laughs> because my mom did not want me to date my mom taught me about Jesus all the time and basically taught me that Jesus is my husband. So <laughs> there's that. So being as though I never wanted to feel like I was going to have to be single my whole life because my mom is basically letting me know that I shouldn't be with anybody because um, that's how I felt. Um, 
I just was kind of like frustrated. So I just was like, well, you know what? I'm going to figure this love thing out on my own because obviously she's not going to tell me anything but stuff about Jesus and Jesus is not on this planet with me. So therefore, I'm not going to be able to have a physical relationship with Jesus. <laughs> so therefore, that's why I started to, you know, pursue figuring out what love is on my own. I did not have a father figure, never did. Um, so I didn't have anybody to tell me anything about love besides Jesus. Okay. So with that being the case, that gets you guys to understand my background on not being taught besides religion, not really being taught that much about love and relationships and being in love and being connected to somebody. I, I, I never even seen my mother you know, have a relationship with a man. So, or, or anybody, <laughs> my mom's had friendships, barely that. So, you know, with that dysfunction in my family and me witnessing that, as opposed to witnessing loving relationships, great, loving, compatible friendships and th things like that. I didn't witness that. Okay. I witnessed some compromised, weird, unusual stuff where my mom was getting, taken advantage by people that were just using her and voila did not end up going through the same thing but my mother being so religious she didn't have anybody sexually using her or anything like that but they still used her in every way other way that they could so um i'm only speaking of my mom because um i recognize and i know that my background and my history has a lot to do with how I look at love, how I receive love, how I make myself vulnerable, um, and all of that kind of stuff. And so that's why I have to share that background story. Now, when I had started my journey with dating, I have to be completely honest. And if you guys are already a part of the truth tribe, you already know my, my name is the root word for truth. So take that as it resonates. Okay. Understand that nine times out of 10, you're going to get the truth from me. Now, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I never, ever, ever lie in my life. I do sometimes, but it's very seldom and very rare. And it's usually only times when I really, really, really feel like it's necessary for me to lie. Other than that, I do the best that I can not to lie. So I'm being very transparent in this video right here. So please, y'all respect this. Make sure you push, push that like button <laughs> and share and subscribe. But um, basically I have recognized that my first and foremost focal point of dating, I think just like everybody else was looks. Not gonna lie. My first thing that attracted me to men in the first place, obviously, um, was looks. So um, if a person was attractive physically, you know, that would make me mentally start to be attracted to them and have situations where um, I end up trying to date them or trying to see if we can have any type of future together or whatever. So I come to understand just remembering when I first started dating, what was my first, very, very first focal point of who I would date. And I can honestly say my first focal point of who I would date would be somebody that I found attractive. And can't nobody judge me on that because that's very common. That's a very common thing with a lot of different people. They're not going to date you if they can't look at you and feel as though you're sexy, you're beautiful, you're attractive, you're pretty, you're, you know. So with that being the case, um, I recognize now in my future self, me being older now, that that's the first place where I went wrong. Not to say that you shouldn't be with somebody that's attractive because I don't think anybody wants to wake up next to someone that they don't feel is attractive that might scare them in the morning. I'm just saying, okay? So 
just to let that be known. Okay. So I'm not trying to tell you, oh, you got to make sure you go for the ugly guys because here's the thing. <laughs> I learned the hard way that flipping to dating ugly guys is not going to make things any better for you. Trust me. <laughs> Cause I've tried it. Okay. Because I had recognized in the past, it's like I still see now that one of the first things that one of the first focal points that I began my dating on was looks just like everybody else. And so when I began to go through a lot of issues with being with guys that I thought were attractive and that looked really good, but recognizing from being in a relationship or a friendship or whatever I decided to have with that guy recognizing that that guy is not a good person and that guy is not attractive on the inside as much as he is on the outside <laughs> and so when I started to really really seriously recognize that I said oh wow so that's one of the areas that we don't really benefit ourselves by being attracted to people just by the outside appearance and not really basically dismissing the outside appearance and instead going within and pursuing finding out how that person is on the inside if if seeing if that person is just as beautiful on the inside as they are on the outside okay so that's what I have come to learn now that is so mandatory to do. But here's the thing where I have gotten confused, okay? And I had to recognize this for myself and God had to slow me down to get me to recognize this. So I had a situation, no longer is a situation anymore, but I had a situation where, short story time, it was somebody that I knew from high school and I, not him, clearly, but I really looked at him as a friend. I really looked at him as someone that I had a lot of respect for. And um, I, you know, felt like I could communicate well with and I could connect well with. And all of these connections and communications and communicating well and all of that came from when we first met. I met this guy when we were in high school. And when we were in high school, I did not have many friends. I had very, very few friends. And then the few friends that I did have was phony and fake. I did not realize it at the time, though. Even though I had an inkling that something was a bit off, I didn't completely realize it until years later and everybody started dropping off like flies that I was calling friends, okay? So that's just to give you guys an idea of what my friendship looked like, my friendship um, uh, connections looked like in high school. So therefore, because I didn't have many connections and friendships and connections with people in high school, the few people that I did have connections with, I took them very seriously. Like I, you know, respected it a lot, okay? So this person and I connected in areas where we both had difficulties. Now, that person may not remember now what our connections were then, but I remember like it was yesterday because like I said, it meant so much to me. OK, so I had a problem in high school and junior high where I had, thank you, God, I got rid of it now. But in the past, I used to have very, 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 very bad acne. OK, it was so bad to the point where I used to get picked on a lot. I used to get, you know, people talking crap about me a lot. Now, mind you, I always was still pretty regardless. And I knew that, you know, I, I um. I think that's why people hated me so much because even though I had my flaws or whatever, you know, I had, pe people had their things to pick on me with. They used to pick on me about my nose. Now I'm like, man, I don't even care about that now. You know, they used to pick, up, uh, pick on me about my acne. They used to pick on me about my muscular arms. You know, like 
But that's all, literally, those three things was all that people could really pick on me about. And I remember my mom and a few teachers that I used to have in the past telling me, these people are picking on you this way because they, they're jealous. They don't have, even with you having issues with your acne, even with you having a nose that everybody supposedly thinks is too big, even with you being so muscular and that's supposed to be so manly, you're still confident. You still walk with your head held high. You still, you know, have a demeanor and have an, a, a presence about yourself that they are very jealous of and they're very envious of and they know that they can never be that way. So they're trying to destroy what you have because they can't have it okay and that's what i was taught by my mother and other people that was older than me when i was younger and i used to come to them about people harassing me people picking on me people talking about me and things like that so with me recognizing that i had that skill about myself at a very young age and i still have it now i understand that this is one of the reasons why i hate <laughs> seem to constantly get harassed and picked on and abused but anyway getting back on focus of what my theme of this video is which is love um i had misperceived my connection and my relationship and or friendship with this person that I was friends with in high school, um, I misperceived it as a genuine friendship. But clearly now I understand it was just a convenience. The only reason why he and I would talk every day, he would come find me and talk to me and bust it up with me and stuff like that. The only reason why things was that way was because it was convenient for him. See, things were that way for me because I genuinely liked him as a person. And I'm thinking that he genuinely liked me as a person too. Because why would you entertain me if you don't actually like me? You know what I'm saying? So that's what I was thinking. But now I come to recognize the reason why he entertained me, even though he probably didn't even like me, was because it was convenient. He didn't have anybody else that he felt like he could talk to. He didn't have anybody else that he felt like he can confide in. I was his, his escape. And me, I was thinking I was his friend because I was looking at him as a friend. But now, in hindsight, recognizing the past and the future, I understand it was all about convenience for him. And that's why all these years later I had a situation where years later after we had not seen each other now we had ran into each other a few times randomly over the years like over the course of 20 years 22 years we probably ran into each other about three or four times right and I have reached out to him a couple times he's reached out to me a couple times type situation okay so it's not like you know, things were completely cold and negative after high school or anything like that. But it wasn't very warm either. So, make a long story short, I used to think that I was in love with this man. Um, how? Well, um, I had started getting dreams, visions, a lot of memories reminding me of him. And now, mind you, over the years, this has been like a constant thing for me. But it was more strong and more to a point where I couldn't control it. And so before, when I used to have those dreams, those visions, you know, my mind playing tricks on me and playing times back and conversations back that I've had with him and stuff like that. It got so overwhelming that I felt the urge and the need to have to connect again with him. Because I'm like, 
it's got to be something about this that is important for me to still have this person in my mind, still have this person in my memory, still have this person in my head, and I have not even seen this person in over 20 years. This is what I'm saying to myself. So, <coughs> with me recognizing that this is something more than just an old friend, because an old friend doesn't last in my mind like that. Let me tell you guys a little something about me, okay? I am a tough cookie, okay? <laughs> I can be a softy for people that I love and I care for and that I feel like means a lot to me. But other than people like that, I'm a tough cookie, okay? So keeping that in mind, I know my capabilities of being a tough cookie, right? So when I started to really recognize that, oh, you got feelings for this person. Now, mind you, I did know I had feelings for this person in the past, but I had thought that I had gotten over all of that because I had was so hurt and so stressed and so frustrated about the connection with this guy because fast forward after high school, in high school, before we graduated, which he wasn't even in our school anymore once he graduated, the year he graduated, but before, he, before graduation, this man became a father, got one of the girls in our school pregnant. So when I found that out and I recognized the whole time he was sitting there in my face, talking to me, confiding in me, vibing with me and stuff, and I'm thinking that it's a real genuine friendship. He was sitting there messing around with a, a whole nother chick and not telling me anything about it. I ended up finding out that he was even messing around with the girl, even though I knew, I knew something was going on because I pay attention way too much. So I knew something was going on between him and the girl, but I didn't know what or the details until there was a couple of people in the school that was older that was cool with me and that peeped what he was doing and they told me and then soon after they told me then he ended up I, th I guess he got the inkling that I knew so then after the people that I knew told me that he was you know what he was up to that he was doing some things with someone else then one of the days that he was confiding in me and talking to me, then he matter of factly brought up, oh yeah, by the way, I'm blah, blah, blahing this person and we've been messing around, da, 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 da. Not those specific words exactly, but in a few trace words, he kind of like cued me in that he had someone else. So all of that hurt me like nobody's business i honestly can say that probably was my first heartbreak because i felt like all right yeah i know we didn't have a sexual relationship you know um even if we wanted to have one we couldn't i know that but i also know that that was corny for you to be sitting here in my face all this time meanwhile you effing around with another girl that goes to the same school, mind you. Like, even if it was somebody that didn't go to the same school, it would have been a little bit better. You know what I'm saying? But I felt like that was so messy that this girl go to the same school as us and you messing around with her. Meanwhile, you talking to me and confiding in me every day. So, with that being the case, I was hurt to nobody, like, like nobody's business with that, okay? So, because of that, I thought in my young mind at the time because i was 15 16 17 years old at the time i thought okay well that's it i'm done like you know and knowing how strong i am as a person i thought that that really was it you know i thought that you know that's it i'm done like i, I don't want this nut ass fool no more like i'm good he didn't show me how much of a nut he is i'm good so i had thought that that's really where my heart was when i came out of high school 
into college. I even seen him a couple of times in college because we both went to the same college too. We just wasn't in the same classes and taking the same courses and stuff. But even when I ran into him a couple of times in college, like he could have tried to talk to me. He could have asked me for my number and all of that because at that time, you know, I was free agent. You know, I was able to date and, you know, I wasn't under my mom anymore. So he never tried. He never tried to get my number. He never tried to talk to me. He never really cared to do any of that, any, you know, any of that. So I peeped that too. And I was just like, all right, bet, you know, whatever. Fuck him. Like, forget him. Excuse my mouth, but forget him. Whatever. So that's why I had thought over the years that there was nothing there anymore. So when I started getting all of these dreams and, you know, fantasies and, you know, memories of us being together remembering conversations that we've had and discussions that we've had and all kinds of stuff and i got to the point where i could not control the thoughts anymore i could not control the visions anymore i could not control the dreams anymore like i couldn't control it anymore and so i got to the point in my heart and in my head where i was like okay since you can't control these thoughts and these feelings and these desires anymore you need to start finding out where it's coming from and why it's here okay so again to do the best i can to make a long story short <coughs> i found this guy and i say i found him because over the years obviously we lost contact and you know i hadn't spoke to him in years so i had to find him found him through his mother found his mother found him okay and I wasn't really hoping for anything specific finding him, but to just really understand what I was feeling. That's more so what I wanted to clarify by finding him more than anything else, okay? But being as though I'm not a person that ever likes to jump into relationships anymore anyway, and I say anymore because I used to jump into relationships when I was younger when I didn't know any better. But I learned my lesson and I learned like, no, it's better for you to pursue getting to know people a lot better as friends and, and friendships first. Because that way you don't make yourself have to be in responsibility of being in a relationship with this person just in case they're not for you. So because I've learned and recognized that, I already knew like, all right, well, when I talk to this guy, I'm definitely not looking to be in a relationship. I'm not looking, looking to jump into anything, nothing like that. I'm looking for us to communicate with each other, to um, be able to connect again and see where that connection can go. If that connection turns romantic, then okay. If it doesn't turn romantic, if it just stays friendship, okay. If we end up never speaking again, okay. I was basically cool with whatever was to end up happening as a result of me reconnecting with him, okay? So I didn't have any preconceived notions. I didn't think that, oh, I'm a, you know, find him and we're gonna be living happily, happily ever after. We're gonna get married or nothing like that. No, that, that was not my mindset, just so you guys know. So I found him, connected with him, and it was awkward. It was awkward from the day that I connected with him because when he called me and talked to me, it was awkward conversation. It was weird. Um, it was unusual. It was just like, it was just like, uh, <coughs> I don't know. But anyway, so I still tried to play along, even though the conversation there, the first conversation that we had after not seeing each other for years was kind of awkward, kind of weird, kind of unusual, kind of like, what is this? Even though that was, and I recognized that that was the way it was, I still tried to entertain the situation. And I kept in contact with this person through DMs, through Instagram, stuff like that. Now, I made it clear though, like I told you guys already, that I was not trying to jump into anything with this person that I was merely doing the best that I can to build some type of friendship first before anything else. So 
keeping that clear and keeping that in mind, this is the kind of communication back and forth that he and I would have. Even though I did inform him and let him know in these communications how I felt. I did. The reason why I did that was because I was tired of feeling like I wasn't being honest with myself. And I was tired of fighting with myself in my own mind and arguing with myself about why don't you just tell him how you feel? If you tell him how you feel, maybe he'll finally tell you how he feels. Now that's not what happened, but that's what I kept fighting myself with before I finally got myself together to be bold enough to tell him how I felt as opposed to whimpering up, which is what I call it, and not expressing my feelings. So to be honest with you guys, I was scared to tell him how I felt. But I felt so much better after I voiced what I was feeling. So I don't necessarily regret telling him. But then again, when I think back on how he took advantage and how he used and abused me in turn because of how I felt, it kind of makes me feel like I regret it. But in all actuality, in all truthfulness, I know I really don't regret it. But it does kind of make me feel like I do. So... I tried to tell them how I felt. Let me see who this is. Hello? Hello? Okay, so anyway, like I was saying, I'm glad I didn't take the video off to answer that. But anyway... Um, I decided to tell him how I felt and communicate with him. And I did it through, through DMs because, you know, we weren't really talking on the phone like that. He was acting like real nervous and scary. Um, reason why I said he was acting real nervous and scary is because we did get one time to talk on the phone. And he was like very nervous in that conversation. And he abruptly stopped the conversation like in the middle of me still trying to talk and stuff like that. And then... He said that he was gonna call me back. Did three or four different times, but never said anything. So that's where I got feeling like he was acting kind of scary, like he was scared to talk to me or scared to communicate or whatever. So that's one of the reasons why I decided, okay, well then I'll just go ahead and communicate how I feel over DMs. That way, maybe it won't be so awkward, you know? So that's what I did. And I told him how I felt told him that you know i feel like i have strong feelings and emotions for you that i might be in love with you um and i might have been in love with you ever since we met all the way back in high school but wasn't really able to do anything about that because of the fact that i couldn't date and i couldn't entertain any men anyway and his response was he didn't believe me it's hard to believe that he says some foolishness and of course, I got on a defense because I'm like, how you don't believe me? Like, I'm a cancer. My whole thing is I don't lie about love. I will be with a person for years and never say I love you just because I do believe that you should never say I love you and you don't mean that shit. That's the kind of woman I am. So because I know that that's the kind of woman I am, I kind of fussed him out when he said he didn't believe me because I'm like, dude, first of all, why would I ever lie to you about that? Right? Second of all, um, for what reason do you not believe me? Who lies about love? Who actually finds you and then tells you that they have feelings for you, they might be in love with you, and lie about that? So, when he was coming at me with that energy, that also was red flags for me, definitely. But I'm going to be honest with you guys again. Me knowing the emotional roller coaster already that I have been going through with this guy. I'm not, I can't say I'm, I, I was surprised by the even more emotional roller coaster that I was going through with him. Can't say that I was because it kind of matched the energy that he has already had in the past with me. 
where it was like a yo-yo up and down up and down one minute you seem like you're a friend the next minute you seem like you don't know what you want to do with yourself okay so this is the same type of energy he's kind of giving off in the dms and yes it's making me upset it's making me angry it's making me mad because i'm a cancer and i'm like i don't play games and he's playing games he's emotionally manipulating me like telling me things like um he might arrange for us to connect and like trying to make it seem like he's going to do that and never actually did what ended up making me really like open up my eyes a lot better and i'm not going to say that i don't still have feelings for this person because my feelings i cannot turn off like a light switch okay so i cannot say that i don't still have deep feelings for this person and emotions for this person and actually angry with myself for still having them to be honest but at the same time the last straw was when this guy asked me for money said that he was struggling he was going through some things he has two kids and he's really like trying to get it together out here and he's struggling and he's going through it and da 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 of course me being a cancer that I am, being a very caring, loving, kind, genuine, gentle person that would give you the shirt off of my back if I have on another shirt. Like, that's how I am with people I love, the people that I care about. And he prayed on that. And he got me to give him some money to help him out. And y'all know what he did? First of all, before I even gave him the money, I told him, I said, yo, I'm not feeling how you've been acting. You've been acting really distant. You've been acting really weird. You've been acting like you don't even want, want to give me your number. You like weird, unusual type stuff. Like when he called me, the one time that we actually did physically talk on the phone, he called me through a blocked number. His number was blocked. But like I said, I wasn't even surprised about the weirdness in the connection because he already been acting weird. You know what I'm saying? Um, and all of the other three or four times that he called the other times, the number was blocked too. But I just knew it was him. Um, so, you know, he says to me when I told him all of that, I'm like, you won't even give me your number. You acting weird. You're acting cold. You're acting distant. Like, that's what I don't like. And now you're asking me for money. And I was like, would you give somebody money? that it was acting cold and distance with you and he was like all right you know i feel you i feel where you coming from i understand i'm sorry that, about that but you know i'm gonna do better working on you know trying to stay connected with you working on trying to make sure that i you know um am more active with you and i said okay fine and and I, you know, arranged getting him the money. Now, mind you, I actually had problems getting him the money at first because I had sent it to the wrong number or something like that. Because remember, I told y'all I didn't have his phone number. So when he finally gave me his phone number to send him the money, I had sent it to the wrong number at first because I wasn't familiar with his number. Y'all know I fixed the problem and still sent him the money and he still didn't appreciate it he didn't even acknowledge that i sent him anything never said thank you nothing so of course i felt some type of way but i was not surprised i can't say that i was surprised i wasn't definitely wasn't because i told him i said this is what i'm not going to appreciate if you are that type of dude that's really going to ask me some for some money and then turn around and still keep acting brand new not only did he still keep acting brand new, he was worse. I never heard from him again. On top of that, he ended up unfollowing my Instagram because that's how we was communicating. We was in communicating through Instagram. He ended up unfollowing my Instagram. And the next thing I know, his thumbnail has a picture of him and another female. Now, the female's face is not shown, which already lets me know you're playing with me with this thumbnail picture because you know I'm gonna see it. That's number one. And then number two, you're, pe you're playing with that female too that you're messing with that's in that picture because you're not even showing her face. If you're that bold to show that you're with a female, why won't you show her face? Basically y'all, he got a picture like this with her like this. 
none of her face is showing only her hair her hair like this and she kissing his face but you can't see none of her face so i'm like clearly that that lets me know right there you a hoe ass nigga because that's whole nigga shit excuse my mouth but that's whole that, that's whole nigga stuff you want to make me jealous because you know i got feelings for you and you want to make this girl feel more relevant so you're going to put her and get them now and i said he probably blocked me well he didn't block me but he probably unfollowed me because he probably have other pictures of her on his page that he don't want me to see and so i'm bringing this story to you guys because i've recognized that the reason why I, I i was asking myself like god why did you allow me to keep thinking about this man why did you allow me to have feelings for this person that i couldn't control why did you allow me to feel feeling so deep for this person that i felt the need to have to go find them and pursue whatever it was that needed to be pursued so that i can get this person out of my head and i think that god has finally responded to me and told me why he did that basically i've come to recognize something about myself remember earlier in this conversation i told you guys in this video i mean i told you guys that i'm a very strong person i'm like very calculated i'm like that type of person that everybody can't get over on me you know everybody can't even get to me let alone get over on me and I know this about myself, but what I didn't know about myself that this man taught me is that even though I'm a very, very, very strong and calculated and um, productive person, there is a weakness in there. And that weakness is, even though I'm a very strong person and I'm not accessible to everybody, one issue is that that strength can weaken with certain people that I have certain connections to. And that's what this connection to this man actually allowed me to learn about myself. That certain people, I may have the strength that I have in my abilities, in my mind and in my heart and in my spirit, but certain people that I have certain connections with, possibly trauma bonds with, I tend to adjust those very rules and those very guidelines that makes me strong and makes me, you know, indestructible. And it ends up making me vulnerable. So basically what I realize and I recognize through this specific specific connection and the lesson that I've gotten from it is that this guy would have never even affected me or even lasted in my mind if first of all I wasn't physically attracted to him that's number one and then second of all if I didn't make myself so vulnerable in becoming friends with him and being a real friend because from high school on to becoming an adult i showed nothing but genuine friendship he could always confide in me he could always talk to me he could always um, communicate with me and be honest with me about how he really felt and i never judged him i never ridiculed him i never looked at him a certain type of way because of how he was and then when like most people do when he asks me for money instead of what walk, walking away and running away and, and and completely ghosting him like most people usually do what did i do i turned around and be a real friend i was there for him and then not only was i there for him i made sure to be there for him even though i was having complications to start with I should have took that as a sign as, honey, you're not supposed to get this man his money. But I was so focused on making sure that I showed who I was 
And that was one of my problems. You got to stop showing people who you are if they are not the same way. If they're not showing you that type of behavior, if they're not showing you those same type of characteristic traits that you're showing them, you have to stop showing people. And I'm talking to myself as well as I'm talking to you guys. You have to stop, seriously, stop showing people the love, the respect, the compatibility, the the um, loyalty, and the generosity that they don't deserve. You really have to stop showing them that. Yes, I do understand that the world keep demanding that you show love and respect and this and that and prove yourself. But you have to be defiant and you have to go against that norm. Because if you don't be defiant and you don't go against that norm, what's going to end up happening is that person, that very person that you're so in love with, is going to end up turning around and it's going to end up breaking your heart, shattering it into a million pieces. And it's your fault. Because at the end of the day, I pursued him. I reached out to him. Yes, it was a certain reason why, but still. And he was playing the games with me the whole time. And I recognized it. I did because I've been played I, I've been played with, with by other guys before. So I recognize game. And I could be a gamer when I want to myself too. So I recognize the game. I just like I said, I became vulnerable because I looked at him differently. I didn't look at him like a regular normal person like everybody else. If I did look at him like a regular normal person like everybody else, he would have never been able to achieve what he was able to achieve. He would have never got no money from me. He probably nine times out of ten would have never lasted in my mind this long. Because, y'all, let me tell you something. I have had quite a few crushes in my life. And I've had a few guys crushing on me in my life to this day. And... I don't appeal to every guy that tries to talk to me. I don't take an interest in every dude that, hey girl, or hey, what, you know, what's up with you type dudes. Like, I don't know. Most guys I ignore, literally, for real. Most guys I genuinely ignore. And I'm about to be more in that mode of ignoring people because why am I even paying any attention to you guys when y'all don't even know how to love nobody right? Y'all keep testing people. Y'all keep disrespecting people. Y'all keep using and abusing people instead of loving them because you know that they're a lovable person. See, me, I didn't understand that behavior because I'm total opposite. I'm the type of person that usually, but I change that now, but I'm the type of person that usually shows love to those who show love to me. So a lot of times, even if that love wasn't like on a grand scale, because I'm such an appreciative person, I treated it as though that love was on a grand scale. You could have did something basic as hell, like maybe just come to an event of mine that I'm having. And I, in the past, would have been so appreciative of that, that... I decide that now I'm going to start being a friend to you. Now I'm going to start opening up to you. Now I'm going to start communicating with you. Now I'm going to start feeling more comfortable with you because I'm feeling like, all right, we can be friends. You know, you already started doing things for me first. So I'm in return, returning the good behavior that you're giving me and returning it back. But I'm recognizing now that's not how people are. That's just how I am. People lie all day and say, oh yeah, well, somebody show me love. I'm going to be so appreciative and I'm going to show the love back. I'm going to be appreciative and I'm going to make sure I give what I'm getting. That's not the truth. That's a bull face freaking lie. Because if you really pay attention to how people act, 
people do not respond to love the way they should. Genuine love? No. And I'm going to actually close out this video talking to you guys about something that I think I might have mentioned already. But I want to mention it again because it does definitely piggyback off of um, what I'm talking about right now. So, basically, is this woman that was speaking, I think it was on either TikTok or Instagram, and she was speaking and she was like, you know, um, basically explaining how people who have never experienced real, true, genuine love, people who've only experienced trauma bonding type of love or ingenuous love or love that's just like fake and phony from the rip. She was like, people like that, they act like they don't really want true love. She was like, they're the type of people that shun love, that abuse the love, that'll take advantage of the love, that'll leave the love confused and hurt. And she was like basically explaining how a person that is used to trauma bonding love, love that's not real, love that's not genuine, love that that's, that's never going to test the, stand the test of time. Um, people who thrive off of that, when they are presented an opportunity or a chance to be with somebody that is a true love, a true companion, a true connection, they're going to use and abuse that connection because they are not familiar with it. She was like, basically, when this type of person has a person that is trying to love them, that's abusing them, that's lying to them, that's taking advantage of them, that's using them, that's trying to rake them through the coals in every way, shape, and form. When they have somebody like that in their lives, they show love to that person. She said, basically, they have the type of attitude where they're like, okay, now I know what to do with you. But when they have somebody that's real, that's genuine, that's actually honest, that's actually straightforward, that's actually giving you the real MP MP3, you know, real tea, they take advantage of that person. They lie to that person. They disrespect that person. They disregard that person. They make that person feel like the utmost crap. Okay? <laughs> and unfortunately, they do that to these people because they don't know how to do better towards these people. They have to learn how to love correctly because clearly they haven't been shown true love. And the best way that you can learn true love is to be shown and to have someone truly love you so that you can recognize it. But if these people have never recognized true love, in other words, their family members, their friends have never truly loved them, then of course they're not going to ever really truly love anybody else. They own children they're not going to love correctly. And I'm recognizing that's why we're having such terrible issues with people being able to be in successful relationships because true love has been compromised. What people know as true love has truly been compromised. Now, fake love has been deemed as real love, which it's not. And so that's the reason why so-called real love is not being successful. That's why so many relationships are breaking up. That's why so many people can't be friends anymore. That's why so many connections are breaking off because no one knows anymore what true love is. And the few people that do know what true love is, they have to protect their love. 
And they can't even show people that true love too freely because they understand that once they show that true love, they're going to start getting disrespected. They're going to start getting disregarded. They're going to start getting used instead of appreciated. And so when you recognize as a true loving person that people are not learning that you love them and appreciating it, but people are learning that you love them and taking advantage of it. When you recognize that that's what people are doing these days, you cannot show love. I have to shut down my heart and stop showing love to people now. And to be honest, what really lets me know that I'm really really right with what I'm understanding completely a lot more now than I have in the past. Now, mind you guys, I was clued in on these things little by little in bits and pieces, but it is all coming together as a whole now. And I feel like maybe it's because I'm maturing more and more as an adult. So it's really actually making more sense coming together now because let's, you know, get from out of the past and get into the future and get into now where I'm in a relationship right now. Now, mind you, that relationship is a little complicated because, you know, things are weird in life and you try to work through life with people and sometimes it feels like it may not go the way you want it to go, but you're trying to still work through it. So it's very compromising the relationship that I'm in now but I'm still in it and I'm still respecting it. But um, despite that, that relationship actually tells me that what I'm learning is definitely head on the truth. How is that? Because the guy that I'm with now is not usually the type of guy that I usually would go for. Here's what I mean. Even though he's an older guy and I've dated older guys before, he's the oldest guy <laughs> that I've ever, ever dated. And I'm probably never going to date another guy that's that old anymore. So that's one thing that makes him not really my usual type that I usually go for. Now, he is handsome. He is a nice looking guy. But he's older. And I usually naturally wouldn't go for that. Also, um, he's also not the type of guy that I usually would go for because I usually go for sociable guys, even though he is a sociable guy, but he has his times when he's sociable and when he's not. And, um, I usually go, to, go for the more sociable guys that are very active, very sociable, very communicating, like popular like that he has those capabilities because when he does get in his moods when he wants to talk to people and he wants to get in conversation I can't stop this man from talking okay and he talks a lot of crap about me not being able to stop talking once I get started but baby I got nothing on him okay so with that being the case and me recognizing all of these different attributes about him that I know is not usually what I would go for, I remember and remind myself of when we first got together. And when we first got together, I, I'm not gonna lie, I was kind of mean to him. I was very cold and distant and, I mean, I had my friendly modes as well where I was very friendly and I was very much myself. But in the beginning with this guy that I'm with right now, my boyfriend that I'm with right now, I was kind of mean to him. I was kind of cold. I kind of act like a dude. And I feel like that's exactly the reason why, even though I'm not completely happy because we're having complications and hardships and craziness going on consistently and it does not, agree with me at all at the same time I can honestly genuinely say that in this relationship 
I can honestly say that I feel more respected in this relationship than a lot of other relationships that I've been in. I can't say that this is the most respected that I felt because I have felt more respected with other people in the past, but it was other things that ended up breaking up those connections. But as far as overall, me knowing that this person actually really does care for me. They not just BSing and playing with my emotions and playing with my feelings. And I understand from this connection with the man that I'm with right now that, baby girl, this is how you have to be. Y'all, I love to be a loving, kind, genuine, gentle soul. That is really my personality. But I can't be like that. And if that's your personality, you can't be like that either. Why can we not be like that? Because we keep hurting ourselves. That's why I can't keep being like that. I can't keep being too sweet. I can't keep being so kind. I can't keep being so gentle and generous and loving. I can't keep being like that because people keep taking advantage of that. They keep using it and they keep abusing it. And the only way they're going to finally stop using and abusing and taking advantage is when they recognize that they don't have any connection anymore. I got to take my power back. And basically, that's been the situation with me. I was subconsciously not realizing that I was giving my power away to these people that I had these trauma bond connections with and I did not realize it. And I was giving my power away, not willingly. I was giving my power away because I thought that this was a genuine connection. I thought that I wasn't the only one that was feeling like I was in a friendship. I thought that I wasn't the only one that was feeling like I was in a relationship. So when you end up being the only one that's in that relationship, in that connection and stuff, and recognizing that you literally was the only one that was being real from the rip. It's so sad that with too many relationships, situationships, and connections in my life, I was the only one being real. And I'm going to be honest with y'all. That, that really genuinely makes me in my heart not want to be a real person anymore. It does because it makes me feel like why the hell do I want to keep being real with people and people keep being fake with me. I might as well be just as fake as they are because at least I'll stay protected and I won't have to worry about nobody playing with my feelings and playing with my emotions anymore. I recognize that, yo, you full of crap and you playing with me. And so I'm not going to give you the ammunition to keep playing with my feelings. I'm not going to keep giving you the bullets to pull in the, put in the gun, in other words, to kill me. Because that's exactly, you know, indirectly what people are doing to you. When you love them and you're showing them true love, but they're not showing you true love. You're basically giving them the bullets to load the gun to kill, hurt, or destroy you. And I have to recognize for myself that this is exactly what I have been doing anytime, even in friendships, anytime I've had connections with people and I've recognized in some way, shapes or forms, red flags and telltale signs that let me know that this person is not real and this person is not genuine and this person may as well, may as well be a walking robot. That's what a lot of these people may as well be. I would not even be surprised now to find out that a lot of people that I have interacted with in my life is actually robots. I wouldn't be surprised now because I understand from my experience with being treated so horribly when I'm so good to people, <laughs> it really it really wakes me up in my head to recognize, yo, this is the reason why the world feels like there's no love here. This is the reason why it feels so 
jacked up and messed up in this planet because anybody that actually does know true love and know how it how it feels and how to express it and how to share it with others don't even want to share that true love because they don't want to get played and they recognize that you literally put a target on your back to get played when in this generation you show true love in this generation when you show that you truly give a fuck excuse my mouth but when you show that you really care in this generation you get raped through the coals you get abused you get taken advantage of you get used and so I am like really getting myself in my mind to the space and the place to protect myself from energy leeches and love leeches because that's what people are. They want to steal your energy and harness it for themselves and they want to steal your love and pretend like they really care and pretend like they'll actually be there or they capable of being there. Pretend like they are really genuine in whatever connection that they're having with you. Meanwhile, the whole time, they're playing you. Meanwhile, the whole time, they're taking advantage of you, making you think that they love you, making you think that they care for you. But in all actuality, you're nothing but a convenience for them. And then when the next convenience comes along, they're gone and you're by yourself. So you have to recognize that this is how people really are. Um, you can't make any excuses for them. You can't change the narrative because this is what I used to do. I used to make excuses for people. I used to try to change the narrative. I used to try to look at things differently to try to change in some sense what the reality really was. But now I'm coming to understand and coming into more maturity that these people are never going to change. So that's why you have to change. And I know it hurts because it hurts me like a mother sucker because it makes me feel like, yo, I don't want to be fake. But you have to be fake. You know why? Because if you're not going to be fake, your realness is going to constantly get punished over and over and over again. Your realness is never going to get appreciated. Your realness is never going to get what you think you deserve. You're not going to get it. And actually, you know what? That goes against the Bible because the Bible tells you that you get what you give. That's what the Bible tells you. But please recognize and understand from experience and from what I'm telling you, in this world today, the way this world is today, you don't get what you give. Now, karma is still real. So eventually, especially if you do a person wrong, it's going to come back around to you. And then go, don't get it twisted. But... Like the Bible tells you, oh, you know, what you do gets done back to you. In a positive sense, you can't believe it. Because if you believe it, you're going to psych yourself out. And you're going to be sadly disappointed. Once that good that you did, don't come right back to you. And it's also a great possibility that not only is it not going to come back to you, but... If it ever did come back to you, it's possibly never going to come back to you through the person that you actually gave to or that you actually was sweet to, you actually was nice to. Now, this is not me trying to tell you guys to not be good people. This is not me trying to tell myself not to be a good person. But what this is me trying to tell you guys as well as tell myself is to be careful who you're good to. Okay? People look like good people. But looks can be deceiving. And I believe I've already done a video pertaining to those factors. That looks, 
They can manipulate you. They can. They can be one of your number one manipulators. You have to pay more attention to how people act. You have to pay more attention to how people make you feel. And you have to pay more attention to how real is this person. Because if this person is not very real, they're not going to appreciate your realness. They're not going to have any respect for how real you are. And that was the situation that I did not understand until now with the guy that I met in high school. I was thinking for myself, being who I am, that of course he's real. Why wouldn't he be real? Of course he's going to appreciate that I'm real. Why wouldn't he appreciate that? That's my mindset. That's, that's where I was with it. And the reason why I was thinking, of course, is because that's where, that was me. I'm thinking of him like he's me. He's not you, baby. You are special. And that's why I recognize that I have to keep acknowledging how special I am, how genuine I am, how loving I am, because that matters. Because of the simple fact that there are not, there's not a lot of people on this planet that is real, that's genuine, that's affectionate, that's loving, that's kind. It's not a lot of people in this world like that. And that's why I know that guy that I met in high school that messed up with me permanently. I know that that man is never going to find another woman like me. Never. He's never going to find another woman like me. And he knows it. But he doesn't care because he, does, he hasn't grown up enough to really recognize what he's lost. And sometimes that's life. Sometimes people don't recognize the value of who you are as a person until you are no longer accessible to them. And I have learned the hard way that I got to stop being accessible to people. I got to embrace being alone. Now, mind you, it's not like I haven't already been embracing being alone because I have, but I have to embrace it even more. And it hurts. It's a hurtful situation to feel like you have to keep embracing being by yourself more than you can embrace possibly ever being with the love of your life. I might not ever meet the love of my life. I'm starting to recognize that. I might be the love of my life. I might be the love of my life. I might not have nobody else outside of myself that's ever going to love me right. I'm, I'm, I'm really coming to that. <laughs> it's about to make me emotional. But I'm really coming to that conclusion that, <laughs> sadly, that, I might be the best person that I ever meet in my life. And I'm not going to lie. That, that hurts. That hurts like crazy to believe and to think that there's no one else like me. And I might be in this alone space for the rest of my life. And y'all probably thinking, well, why are you talking about being in an alone space? You, you're in a whole relationship. But do y'all recognize that I also mentioned how I'm going through complications with this relationship? That's part of the complications that I'm going through with this relationship. That I feel very alone. That I feel very by myself. That I feel very, you know, um, slightly supported. I feel supported sometimes, but majority of the times, no, I don't really feel supported. And I'm going to talk about this last bit. And then I'm going to bow out of this video. Um, this video wasn't even supposed to be this long, but whatever. Um, the last thing I'm going to talk about is a video. I'm going to try to see if I can bring it up so that I can freshly listen to it to tell you exactly what the lady said. But um, it's, a video, it's another video that I had came across today that was speaking about black women. And basically talking about our hardships and talking about 
talking about what we go through as women and talking about how we can't catch a break. We can't. Like, literally, sadly, we can't catch a break as black women. Everything is a problem. Everything everything is wrong with us. Like, it's, it's always us. Us, 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 us. It's always us. Like, it's just really like, you just can't win one way or another. You just can't. All right, so... I'm trying to see if I can find a video, but I can't seem to find it. But it was a white woman, actually, that was speaking about Tyler Perry talking about black women and kind of making a mockery of us on the low. And I used to have very much admiration for Tyler Perry. I used to think that if anybody, um, I would choose handpick to you know help me to put my story out there i was thinking that tyler perry would be one of the people that i would want to do that because of how much i have admired so much his videos and his movies over the years and his his plays and stuff and to be honest watching that video of him telling black women to settle for men that's not doing the best for themselves i'm not gonna lie it really took the leveling of how I respect Tyler Perry from here to here, because I'm starting to recognize how you don't you don't respect black women either. You capitalize off of our pain, and that's exactly the reason why you would tell us to keep settling. Because if we don't keep settling, you're not going to be able to keep making movies, making fun of our pain, making fun of our struggle, making fun and laughing at the things that hurt us the most. <clears throat> and I'm recognizing that the blonde is seriously being taken off of my eyes on how people genuinely, truly, really, really, really are. The blindfold is being taken off, okay? And I'm really recognizing what people's personalities really are. I'm really recognizing who people really are. Not trying to recreate them and basically create a whole new emoji in my mind that's more compatible to what I want them to be because that's what I used to do. I used to like literally create, recreate people in my mind and take out things that I did know and recognize to be not so good about that person and like blow up things that I knew was not so great. About. I mean, um, dilute things that was not so great about that person, but then blow up things that was good about them. So basically the good that they did do that probably wasn't even that much I'd blow it all the way up and, and, and look at it like it's bigger than it is. And then the bad that they would do, I would menialize it and give them a reason or give them an excuse for acting in that way. Now, I've come to the rec recognition that no, don't do that. Because you're doing yourself an injustice. Because you're not looking at these people for how and who they really are. You're looking at them how you want them to be which is not who they really are, which means you're going to be sadly disappointed eventually. They might not disappoint you right away, but eventually you stick around long enough, you are definitely going to get disappointed because you're not looking at that person and who they really are. You like, really, we have to learn to look at people for who they are. Believe that person. When they show you they the back of a donkey's behind, you got to believe that. You really have to believe it. You can't beat yourself up about it. You can't. But you have to believe that they are who they are. If they're a piece of crap as a person, you have to believe that. And what we have to stop doing is we have to stop allowing people to convince us 
to stop believing who they really are. Because that's what people do. When we recognize who they really are and we tell them about themselves, then they try to manipulate us and try to tell us that we're wrong. They try to tell us that we don't see what we, we know we're seeing. They try to tell us that we're not experiencing what we know we we're experiencing. And they try to manipulate you. And you have to go above all of that. You have to, first of all, recognize what they're doing. Because <clears throat> these people are very subtle. People like this are very, very subtle. They are not obvious in how they move. They may be bold with some of the moves that they make, but they are not obvious. And so that's how some people can get got like me, that people would be shocked. Like how you get got, you don't barely pay anybody any mind. Exactly. That's why, because these people are subtle. So if they weren't subtle, they know me, I'd have peeped you right off the straight from the rip. I'd have recognized straight from the, Oh, straight from the gate. You ain't for me. But because they were settled with how they were behaving, because they were settled with how they were acting, because they weren't being truly honest about who they really were, that's how they were able to get to me. That's how they're able to get to you. That's how they're able to get to other people that are very smart, that are very talented, that are very on they ish you a person that's really on your ish, you really paying attention and you still get played, don't feel no type of way, honey. It's okay. It's okay. Because it happens to the best of us, okay? To be honest with you. Everybody don't want to be honest. But that's why when you listen to Ruth, you, when you vibe with Ruth, you vibe with the truth. That's why I say that saying for my page. Because one thing that I always want to stand for... <clears throat> <laughs> I always want to stand for the truth and I never want to, I never want to fall for a lie. And sadly, in that story that I just told you guys about in my past, where I felt like I fell in love with somebody that was not for me and I couldn't see it because I was blinded by the feelings and the emotions that I had. I couldn't see it. And we have to recognize that we genuinely do blind. We literally blind ourselves by love. We literally do. We put the blindfold on our own eyes when we fall in love with somebody. And I think that's why they call it falling in love. Because you you not trying to do that. A lot of times when you fall in love, you, you not trying to be, you like, you not purposefully walking into something like, yeah, I'm going to walk out of this in love. Nobody does that. Nobody, you know, gets into anything and say, yeah, we're going to come out of this in love. That's, that's the plan. And if they do make that plan, a lot of times it never happens that way. So that's why I feel like we use that sense to even describe love because it is like you're falling because you, 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 you usually don't straight go to be in love with anybody. Like you, <laughs> it just usually ends up happening that way. And so I guess that's why people call it falling because yeah, you kind of fall into it. You don't be meaning to get into that sometimes you don't even be meaning to be nothing but friends but then if you end up falling in love you end up falling in love and then you like wait hold up like i said with my story i recognized that i had feelings but i didn't really understand what they was and that's probably because i was so young you know when you're younger you 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 it's hard for you to really understand everything that's going on because it's like you're just learning you know, you're just getting it. You, you, you know, at 15, 16 years old, you're just learning about love. You're just recognizing what love and relationships and things like that really, really are. And, you know, 
how they really look because as a child, nobody is really honest about love and honest about life. <laughs> if we be honest, nobody is honest about love or life when we're kids. When we're kids, everybody's trying to sugarcoat shit. Excuse my mouth, but let's keep it a bean. When you're kids, everybody's always, always trying to sugarcoat things, trying to hide things, trying to, you know, trying to manipulate things so it don't seem the way it really seem. And we, I don't think we really recognize that we prepare our own children and our own young people to be manipulated by the rest of the world because us as parents, we're the first manipulators that our children meet. If we be honest, when you were younger, who's the first person that manipulated you? The first person that told you something and kind of curbed the story in a certain type of way to be beneficial in your ears, even though it may not have actually genuinely been beneficial? Your parents, right? And not to say that parents are wrong for that. But we have to understand what mistakes our parents made with us so that when we make, when we have children, when we make kids, we don't make those same mistakes. And if we really be honest with ourselves, our parents was the first ones to manipulate us. Our parents was the first ones to lie to us about how the world really is. Nobody's parents really genuine usually tells them about the ugliness of what the world is. They try to purposefully cover it up because, oh, he, he's a child or she's a child or they're just a baby. Babies need to know that they're in a world full of evil people and they need to know how to maneuver in that evil world. You can't learn how to maneuver in an evil world if you don't know that that world is evil in the first place. You can't. You can't even take heed to the warning if you're never warned about how crazy and messed up the world is. And that's how so many of us are brainwashed. It starts with our parents. Our parents already wasn't honest with us about how much of a struggle life is. Actually, your parents kind of push you into being in the struggle because they'll tell you. Oh, if you ain't going to buy by my rules, you could go ahead by yourself. Pushing you into the evil world that they did not even prepare you for in the first place. Because how can you prepare somebody for a world that you won't even be honest with them about how it really is? How can you prepare them? You can't. And sadly, that's the dilemma that a lot of us adults have. We were not taught how evil and how messed up this planet is. We learned by default and we ended up having to take abuse in the process and it ends up changing us as human beings. It ends up making us heartless. It ends up making us mean jealous, hateful, hateful to people that you should be learning from, hateful and jealous of people that you should look at as a role model. You should be looking at that person like, yo, I look up to you. Yo, you, 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 you doing the daggone thing out here, man. You coming against all odds. You making sure that regardless of how messed up life is, you still make something positive out of it. That's something to admire, isn't it? But the sad part about it is that because we're not we're not taught honesty to start with, starting from our parents. Our parents start lying to us. They start the lies. They might not want to admit it, but they did. And sadly, a lot of times, people just continue what their parents started. Their parents started lying to them and manipulating them. So now they're going to continuously be liars and manipulators. You want to know why we're in a world full of liars and manipulators? Well, they th their parents were that way. That's how these people were raised. 
So when you recognize that everybody's not raised like you, when you recognize everybody doesn't think like you, everybody doesn't move like you, everybody's not as genuine as you are, then you have to move accordingly. Then you have to recognize that, okay, I can't be so loving to everybody. I can't be so giving to everybody. I can't be so genuine to everybody. I can't. Because it's like a double-edged sword. It's going to end up hurting me. It's not going to hurt them. They're built for tough. They're built for this bullshit. It's going to hurt you because you're the one that's not built for this. You're built for love. You're built for beauty. You're built for honesty. You're built for respect. These people are not built for that. They're not built like that. These people were taught to manipulate and to um, love bomb and to traumatize. This is what these people are taught. You have to recognize you were not taught like them and they were not taught like you. You were taught true love. You were taught true bonding, true relationship, true connection. When you really love somebody, you really give a fuck. You don't sit there and say you love somebody and then sit there and act like you don't give a fuck. That means you don't really love them. Let's get out of the habit of love bombing people and telling them that you love them and telling them that you feel this way and you feel that way and manipulating them through slight actions that make them think that you're right, but then turning around and hurting them in the process, disrespecting them in the process, abusing them in the process, using them in the process. We got to get to the point to recognizing what we're really dealing with out here so we can deal with it accordingly. And so we can actually end up benefiting from the connections and the relationships that we have in life, as opposed to being destroyed by them. Because in all actuality, that's what consistently has been being done in the black community and probably in other communities as well. But because I'm black, I'm going to always be pro-black. And in the black community, this is one of the most crucial things is connections. And the sad part about it is that even though that's one of the most crucial things in the black community is also the most torn down thing in the black community every sense of being able to be connected to each other is torn down every sense of being able to believe in each other is disrespected and disregarded every sense of being able to truly support one another is disregarded i'm going to give you guys this short story time and then i'm going to let this go I had a time, matter of fact, when I first started doing my bedazzling, as you guys can see, my, one of my nails came off, but as you guys can see, my nails are flawless. I did that. <laughs> so when I first started doing my bedazzling and my blinging, right? I remember I used to go to this rainbow right around the neighborhood where I used to live at. And I would go there to get some of the stuff that I would bling out. So I would either go to Rainbow or I would either go to like a thrift store or something like that and buy like hats or shirts or shorts or something to bling out. So I remember that when I first, 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 first started to bling stuff out, this is when I like literally first started. I, one of the times I was going to um, Rainbow to get some hats so that I can practice my blinging. And um, this one lady, she noticed me. And um, she seen, I guess she noticed my bling stuff that I was wearing. And she made a comment. She was like, oh, that's really pretty, your hat. She was like, where you get that from? And I was like, oh, thank you. I said, well, um, I do this myself. I'm creating a blinging business where I put blingy stuff all over everything. I said, so I do this. And she was like, oh, wow. Like, she was very excited. Like, y'all, she was like. She made me happy with her energy. You know, she was like so excited. She was like, wow, I really love that. She was like, right now I can't get one. She was like, but I would like to buy something from you. She was like, is that possible? I was like, oh yeah, definitely. I was like, um, I don't have any information right now on me because I don't have my cards yet. I said, but as soon as I get them, I will definitely bring it back to you. I think I took about maybe two, three days to get one of my um, business cards. 
because I had made some business cards. It's, it's not the business cards that I have now, but I had made some business cards back then. They were like so cheesy, but they, they it was the beginning. So, you know, I came back to try to give her a business card. Like I, like I said, it was like maybe a few days later. And I remember coming into the store and recognizing the energy was just off, okay? I hadn't even spoken to anyone yet. And soon as I walked into the rainbow, I was like, whoa. I felt like it was different than the last time. But I still continued. I tried to find a young lady or whatever. And when I found her, her energy was totally different. And in my head, I'm like, why is she acting this way? So basically, remember, like I told y'all earlier, she was so excited. She was like, oh, that is so beautiful. I really love it. Like, that is really nice. I really would like to support your business. Y'all, it's almost like she flipped. It was almost like it was total opposite. And, and, and she wasn't like really speaking very much, but it was just like her energy. So it was like, instead of her having the energy of wanting to support, now she had the energy of being very standoffish and very quiet. So when I came into the store, I was looking for her and I said, Hey, how you, when I seen her, Hey, how you doing? Da, 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 da. Remember I'm the one that, um, told you about the blinging and you asked me about whether I had any information so that you could be able to order with me. And she said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. And I was like, well, here's the card. Remember, I told you I was going to um, make sure I get some cards made. And I, I finally got the cards made. She was like, oh, okay, thank you. But I noticed that she kept looking around and she kept looking at this white man. And I connected the dots in my head immediately. I said, oh, oh, this white man must be her manager or supervisor. And he must have had something negative to say to her after she showed, you know, um, interest in my creativity. He must have hated that. So he must have had something negative to say about me to her when I left the store. And so by the time I came back, he probably, you know, maybe told her if you buy from her, you're going to get fired or something. You know how, you know, people can be, I don't know for sure, but I can tell from the energy. Me, one thing about me, I can't ignore energy. My my energy level and, and how I can connect with people in their energy is too heightened. And maybe that's the cancer in me. Like I'm very like connected to people, like nobody's business. I don't even gotta know you. And it's powerful. So it was like I could tell just in the energy in that place. I was like, whoa, total difference. So even though she didn't say anything to me, I can read it in her eyes. She was scared. She was like, she had like, like she was nervous. And I was like, I'll be a potato in a sack. This man must have threatened her if she, if she supported my business. He had to. Because why else would her energy be so much different? You understand what I'm saying? As opposed to being excited to, to support. Her energy was total opposite. So standoffish. To the point I almost didn't give her the card. But I gave it to her. And then I just left. But I told you guys that story to basically give you the inkling to let you know that, yo, we live in a world that strategically... When I say strategically, strategically don't want us to win. They strategic about this shit. They, they, yo, they mean it. They letting you know they mean it. They hate you. They can't fucking stand your ass. I'm like, yo, when I peeped that situation, I was like, yo, if that's not real hate, I don't know what real hate is. Because I'm like, that was straight up hateful energy to let me know. Yeah, I see you working on yourself. I see you trying to better your situation. I see you trying to make a better life for yourself. Now watch how I sit there and try to ruin it for you. And thank God, I didn't allow that to ruin my future. I didn't allow that to have me discontinue my businesses. Actually, I allowed it to be more of a strength for me. I actually allowed that to be like a battery in my back and to recognize to have that much hate 
directed to me by a person that does not even know me, that shows how powerful I am. I really do understand and recognize that even though that person was trying to come against me and trying to destroy my heart, it actually helped me build myself because it helped me to recognize how powerful I am. I got to be a powerful ass female, a powerful behind woman to make you talk so negatively about me that you discourage somebody from supporting me. That's a lot of power. And you don't even know me. So it just lets me know that you are a powerful person. And that's why people are coming for you so heavy. That's why they're coming for you so hard. Because they hate your power. They hate your energy. That's why they close the doors on you when they see that you actually talking something meaningful. Something genuine. Something honest. The devil want to shut it down. Because the devil hate that. He, he, the devil really hates when God is showing his power of who he is, Satan hates that. And in me doing what I needed to do to become a better person and to live a better life, I allowed God to show his power in my life. And people are hating me for it. And I feel like that was a telltale sign to show me how much people hate you for trying to be a better you. And the thing about it is this. You can't win either way. You trying to be a worse you. You ain't going to win because they're going to talk crap about you. You try to be a better you. You ain't going to win because they're going to talk crap about you. So your best bet as a person is just to live life to your fullest. And be the best you can, you, you can possibly be. And not worry about no mistakes and not worry about how nobody looking at you and not worry about what nobody's saying about you. Because at the end of the day, some of these people don't even like they self. And one thing about me, thank you, God, I have learned to like myself. I've learned to be able to look in the mirror and be very, very pleased in what I see. And not just because of my physical features, even though thank you, God, that my physical features are beautiful, too. But. I'm talking about my innermost features, my heart, my mind, my spirit, my good energy. That's what makes me stand out from the rest of the world, honey. And that's why I know I am definitely outstanding. That's why I adore myself. And I'm learning more and more as the days go by. You need to adore yourself. Stop looking for these animals out here that don't even care about they self, don't even like they self. Stop looking for them to like you. How you gonna expect somebody to like you that don't even like what they see in the mirror, baby? How, for real, come on, let's, let's, let's be honest and let's keep it straightforward. How do you really expect them to like you and to genuinely be into you they don't even like they self, boo. They look in the mirror and they hate that. That's why they can hate you so heavy. They don't even like them. So once you recognize that this is the ass backwards, excuse my mouth, but this is the kind of world that we live in, okay? Ass backwardness that people are teaching us to have, we need to recognize, uh-uh, that ain't the way to go. Don't be ass backwards. Love yourself first. And don't love yourself by giving yourself an excuse to be mean, to be nasty, to be rude, and be messed up towards people. Because that's not loving yourself. That's actually self-destructing. But you love yourself <coughs> by actually being honest with yourself. By actually really recognizing who you truly are when you look in the mirror. That's why I have really learned to truly love myself. Because I stopped looking in the mirror and recreating what I see. Now, I look in the mirror and I see what I see. And I appreciate that and I love her for that. 
Because I love her for being who she is. I love me for being who I am. And now I know more of who I am now than I did years ago, like 10, 15 years ago. I'm more into who I am as a person right now than I was 10, 15 years ago. And I'm proud of myself for that because a lot of people can't say that. A lot of people can't say that they honestly can look themselves in the mirror and say, you know what? I have changed and I've changed for the better. And thank you ancestors that you gave me the energy and the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding of how I can actually maneuver and do that in a world full of people that's trying to distract me and keep me from becoming the better person that I can be. Because literally it seems like that's the world's mission. The world's mission is to distract you and destroy you. And if you are the type of person that's putting your foot down and instead of allowing this world to distract and destroy you, you take what the world gives you to distract you and destroy you and use it as your pedal stool to levitate and graduate. And become a better person that you have ever been in your life. So that any person that you took an interest in or that you may have loved or that you may have had some kind of care for or respect for that may have been illegitimately, you know, developed. <clears throat> you can start to recognize, oh, okay. I'm not going to do that no more. Because I see these people don't deserve this. They don't deserve my love. They don't even deserve my attention. We need to start recognizing who we really are. And since recognizing what people really deserve to be in our presence. That may sound kind of cocky, but I don't give a God darn. Cause God damn it. Let me tell you something. If you don't get a little cocky and very confident in yourself, this world is going to eat you alive. So, I got to allow myself to get a little cocky and overstand. If you don't appreciate me being in your presence, if you're not going to treat me the best that you could possibly treat me from being in your presence, then I have the power to revoke the power I just gave you and take it back and not give you my presence at all. Because that's why it's called presence. It's a gift. And a gift can be taken back. And that's just why we're taken back by God. That's why we don't last forever. We're gifts. Gifts can be revoked. So God revokes the gift of our life when our journey is over. Therefore, we can revoke the gift of our presence in the presence of someone else that does not honor, does not respect, and does not show loyalty to you. If that person is showing you anything besides honor, love, and respect, and loyalty, or the same type of vibe that you're giving them, you need to show their behind the door like yesterday. And as a matter of fact, kick them out. Take your foot spiritually, bop, kick them out. Because people like that, if you allow them to stick around, they are going to destroy you. And then you're going to look back at your life and wonder what happened. And then you're going to recognize that you allowed an a, a, a addictive distraction to destroy your future. I'm not going to allow it. I'm not going to allow it. So that's why I said earlier that story that I told you guys, that's why I ended up finally saying, you know what? I recognize that that person the whole time was never for me. They were always against me, even when they were pretending to be my friend. I just didn't recognize it because they didn't act like they were pretending. They act like they was being genuine. They act like they were being real. And when a person acts like they're being real and they seem to be real, a lot of times you're going to believe that. And so I did until now I don't because now I recognize like, yo, how I thought this person really was. That's not how they really was. All of that was manipulation. So now I recognize, don't allow nobody to manipulate you no more. It don't matter how in love you might be. It don't matter how connected you might be. If that person is on a manipulative type note, you need to find out quickly how you can disconnect and 
permanently destroy whatever connection you have with that person. Because if you don't, that person is going to permanently destroy you. All right, guys. So that's the end of my video. Sorry, it took a lot longer than I expected it to, but I really needed to get this message across to you guys because I felt like it was an important message for me. And a lot of important messages for me that I recognize is good for me. I, you know, recognize that it may help somebody else. And so if this message may have helped you, put a comment in the comment section. Let me know. Let me know um, if any of these words have inspired you. Let me know if, you know, you have had any experiences similar to any of the stories that I've told. And tell, let, talk to me. Let's talk about it, you know? Cause that's why I'm here, you know, um, I'm here to connect with people that have a hard time connecting with genuine souls. Cause I'm a genuine soul. So I want to connect with people that's like me or more like me than I am. And if you're not like me, you're not going to watch this video this far. <laughs> you probably X'd out in like the first five minutes. If, if that. So if you got this far in the video, thank you. Thank you so, 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 so much. You are so appreciated for your support and for your truthfulness and being able to take the truth because most people can't take the truth. You ever heard the saying, you can't handle the truth. Yeah, it's a lot of people like that. So if you're one of those people that's like me that actually can handle the truth, um, and you got to the end of this video and you got a lot out of this video and you appreciate my platform and you appreciate having someone that's so genuine and so honest to really communicate with you, then make sure you press that like button. Make sure you press that subscribe button and make sure you what? Make sure you become a part of the truth tribe. Cause when you vibing with Ruth, you vibing with the truth. And that's about that on that. Peace out. I see y'all next time.